His promises. Come on. Listen to this. Acts, the second chapter, we read where the Holy Ghost failed. Yes. Fail, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Right. Cloven tongues of fire. Amen. And it filled all of them. Yeah. And they begin to speak mm -hmm. in other tongues. Yeah. You say, oh, Pentecostal Praise preacher, that's God. just for the book of Acts. Huh. Wonder why Peter said in Acts 2 and 38, mm -hmm. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise. Can I say that again? Amen. For the promise. Yes. Did you hear that? Yeah. Is unto you. But he didn't stop there, Brother Dave. If Brother Slice, if it had only been for that day in Jerusalem, he would have said, This is the promise that God promised to you. But he don't stop there. I wish you'd read the whole book. I wish your pastor would finish out the scripture. Come on. This promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Sin. What is That's what the promise. promise? He promised the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. the Comforter would come. Amen. Amen. That's it. You remember that old song? He abides. Yeah. He abides. Mm -hmm. The Comforter abides yeah. with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow, the narrow way. For the Comforter abides yeah. with me. Right. Oh. That promise is for you today. Yes, sir. You don't have to sit there on that pew and dry up and blow away. That's it, brother. God's got a comforter. Come on, preach it. Amen. Preach the Holy Ghost, this gift is yeah. for you. And that promise is still yours today. That's right. It wasn't just a promise for those people in Jerusalem. That's right. Amen. Come on. I'm fixing to try to get this last part and close. We're going to have to continue with Hebrews 11th chapter and the 11th verse. And while you're turning there, if you're turning there, the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone yes. that believeth. To the Jew first, yeah. and also to the Greek. Yeah. We're talking about God's promise. Not just to the Jews, but to whosoever believes. Whosoever will come. Amen? That's right. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now that's a promise. Amen. That's a promise that you can sink your teeth into. Yeah. So I just don't feel God. That don't have feeling does not have anything to do with faith. At all. As a matter of fact, I don't really know how to put this. Yeah. Maybe you can understand it better than what I can put it, but it ain't when you're feeling it that you really need the faith. That's it. Amen. Yeah. When faith really kicks into high gear is when you don't feel nothing. Right. You don't see nothing. Uh, you ain't heard nothing. Right. But you still believe because you have faith in His Word. Yeah. Not faith in the feeling, Brother Sleeze, because the feeling will go. Amen. Oh. You ever heard that old song, We've Lost That Love and Feeling? Yeah. yeah. Well, you tell me one of these days yeah. you're going to get up and you ain't going to feel that love and feeling. Right. Amen. Right. And you're going to have that faith going to have to kick in. Yeah. And you're going to have to say, We walk by faith yeah. and not by sight. Yeah. And the just shall live by faith. Exactly. Faith in what? Faith in God's oh. Word. Amen. God's promises are faithful, they're unmovable. Amen. If He said it, that settles it. That's it. Amen. That's it. Up to you whether you want to be part of it or not. Come on. And listen, if you're out there smoking your dope and drinking your booze and cussing every breath, and you've never ever accepted Jesus or gave Him your life, oh. you can't claim these promises. Come on, brother. That would be like me going to the reading of a will of a man, yeah. expecting him to give me an inheritance, uh -huh. even though he didn't know me, I didn't know him. Maybe he knew me, I didn't know him, whatever. But I wasn't his son. Right. And I walk in and here sits his son uh -huh. waiting for the reading of the will because he rightfully inherited. His father left him something. Come on. And I walk in there saying, give me my part. Well, you ain't got no part. You've got to get in the family before you can partake in the inheritance. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. you got in, you got to get in the blood vault, the blood war church of the redeemed. And then you lay hold of the Bible and say the promises of God are mine. They're all mine. Preach on, brother. Oh, do you remember this old song? 
Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. All the blessings of His love divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Oh, sing it. I take it y'all didn't hear it. You didn't sing it. Right? <laughs> every promise in the book is mine. Oh, I've been grafted into the vine. So for the middle of it, you ain't a Jew. Oh, I've been grafted into the vine. Come on. Amen. Amen. I've been washed in the blood. Yes, sir. I'm them Gentiles he's talking about. Come on. That would trust in him because that's what I'm doing. Oh, if I was trusting in me, I'd be a pitiful mess this morning. If I was trusting in the Baptist church, I'd be a pitiful mess. If I was trusting in the Pentecostal church, I'd be a pitiful mess. If I was trusting in Jimmy Swaggart, I'd be a pitiful mess. If I was trusting in Billy Graham, I'd be a pitiful mess. If I was trusting in Obama, my goodness, I'd be a pitiful mess. Amen? Amen. But I'm trusting in Jesus. Amen? That's right. I'm trying to close. Hebrews 11 and 11 says, Through faith... Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Why? It tells us. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. All right. Did you hear that? That's how I know that I'm saved this morning. Amen. Because I have judged him faithful yeah. who has promised. Amen. That's how I know this morning that all things work together for my good because I have judged Him faithful yeah. who has promised. Amen. That's how I know this morning that He supplies all my needs because I have judged Him faithful That's who has right. promised. Amen. amen. The promises of God are yea and amen. That's right. If He promised it, that settles it. I can grab a hold of it, sink my teeth into it, and they're mine. Amen. amen. Salvation is mine because I have faith in Him. Absolutely. Amen? That's true. The, the, word, the Scripture that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. That's a promise. That's it. And He'll bring that to pass. Amen? But Sarah judged Him faithful uh -huh. who had promised. Right. Verse 16, Romans the fourth chapter. Come on. Talking about her husband. All right. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Yeah. Do you hear that? The promise was to be made sure, not just for Abraham, but to all of the seed. Yeah. Not to that only which is of the law, but in that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. all right. Did you hear that? The father of faith, Abraham. The promises that God gave to him were not just for him, yeah. but they were for us. Yes, sir. We were grafted into the vine whenever we were born again. Whenever we had that cross experience, amen, put our faith in Jesus and what He did at the cross, the oh, wow. promises become ours. 17th verse says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before Him who He believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And He's talking about God, not man. God has the power to call those things that are not as though they were. Amen? That's right. Who against hope... Listen, talking about Abraham, I'm trying to close. I don't want to lose you. Who against hope... This is Romans 4 and 18. Right. Talking about Abraham. Who against hope believed in hope. Meaning against all odds. Right. Here he is. Old man. Thought God... I ain't never going to have no kid. I ain't never going to have no son to carry on my name. But God promises him. Calls him outside his tent. He says, come here, I'll show you something. Yeah. You see those stars up there? Oh, Abraham, he looks up. My goodness. Look at all those stars. God said, I'm going to do with your seed the same as you see up there. Right. The number. Number that couldn't be counted. So Abraham latches on to that. And against all odds, he has faith in God. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20 says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. All right. Verse 21, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. All right. Listen to this. 
And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. He said, Brother Billy, what's this got to do with me? The 23rd verse says, Now it was not written for his sake alone. Verse 24 says, But for us also. Did you hear that? Amen. This promises were not just for Abraham and his seed. They were for us being his spiritual seed because we have the same faith. We got in on the same faith that Abraham had. He didn't call out on Allah. He talked to the great I Am, Jehovah. He had Jesus said Abraham saw his day and rejoiced in it. Abraham looked forward into the future at the Messiah that would come. And he put his faith in that, Brother Sleaze. Now we look back at the cross and put our faith in the Messiah that that gave us life for us. Yeah. And through that same faith oh, right. that Abraham had on the back side of the cross, yeah. we stand on this side of the cross yeah. having the same, being joined in the same faith that we become partakers of His promises and His glory because of our faith That's in Him. It. It, oh, I wish somebody could get a hold of that. I probably never will say it that good again. You got it. Amen. That's get the it. tape. Got it. That was good. It is. We were joined together by oh hallelujah Praise God. by the faith in Him Praise and His God. promises. Yes, sir. Yeah. His promises. Amen. My goodness. And not for His sake alone, but for us also. To whom it shall be imputed. What? Righteousness. Right. Why? Because of our faith in the promises of God. Oh. Have you ever wondered, and I didn't wonder this till this week. Yeah, come on. Have you ever wondered why Lot and Abraham were together? Come on. And their shep, you know, their herdsmen begin to have fights. They couldn't get along. Yeah. We wouldn't know nothing about that, would we? Yeah. So Abraham calls Lot. They get together, and Abraham says this to him: he "says Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, between my herdmen and your herdmen." Verse nine, Genesis thirteen says, "Is not the whole land before thee? Yeah. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. Yeah. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right." If you depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. All right. Do you know why it didn't matter so much to Abraham whether he went to the left or whether he went to the right? Come on. Because he said, if you want to go to the left, you go to the left. Yeah. God's going with me to the right. Amen. Praise the Lord. He had faith. He staggered not at the promises of God. He knew that whether he went to the right or whether he went to the left, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and that God's promises will be fulfilled. That's it, brother. Not where he was at. That's the truth. So what's Lot do? He looks up and he sees, oh, it's well watered. It looks nice. Yeah. Reminds me of Egypt. Uh -huh. So he heads towards Sodom. Yeah. Come on. That's where your carnal eyes will always take you. Right. Yeah. Doubt and the carnal sight will always take you to that which that looks more sure. Yeah. I can yeah. feel this, Brother yeah. Sleece. Yeah. I can put my hands on yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, but through eyes of faith, the man who staggered not at the promises of God, Abraham said, Okay, you're going to the left. We're going to go to the right because I know God's going to make His promises come to pass either way. Amen. You're going to the right. Okay, I'm going to go to the left. You're going frontwards. I'm going to go back this way right here because God's promises are with me and He is not a man that He should lie. And I'm not going to stagger at the promises of God. And the promises in the book are mine. God has promised them to me and He will fulfill that which He has promised. Come on, say it. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. So you go ahead, Lot. No. Wherever you want to go. And the eyes of the flesh says, I'm going over here because I can see it, I can feel it, I can touch it. I know that yeah. it's profitable. And you yeah. see what kind of mess that left him in. Yeah, really? There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is death. Amen? That's it. But through eyes of faith. Remember that we walk by faith, not by sight. Right. Abraham says, I'm going to go his way. Now we don't say nothing about Abraham looking to the right after Lot goes and think, well, you know, that really does look good. No, he just walked by faith. Come on. The just shall live by faith. faith. 